Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and I have done it. I have completed the the hardest mission for Extreme 2 Tempered Edge. I have done the 9 turn clear. It took a few tries, and when I say a few, it took a lot. And when I say it took a lot, it took a couple hours for that perfect RNG to come down. So these clips are obviously going to be pre-recorded because I cannot do this on a whim. Um, this is the team I used for the three turn clear. I will include the four, no, sorry, not the three turn, the fucking nine turn clear. I'll also put in a clip for a 10 turn clear that swapped out Trainee for um, Earth Soe, in case, you know, you have that option as well. I'm sure, you know, if you get the same godly RNG luck, you can probably clear it with Soe. But Trainee, because she's magic, and because I have Earth Millum on her, she has higher attack stat than my Valentine. Um, it just works better when you lower the magic resistance with Val, then Trainee hits a lot harder, and this will make up for her abysmal attack stat. So, without further ado, let's jump in. Alright, here we are for the 10 turn kill. Again, I'd said I've, you know, swapped Trainee out for Soe this time. Um, it... His guaranteed crits are nice, but both of... Both Soe and Benny Mario in the stage are weak to magic, so you're already at a disadvantage using Soe, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So, I mean, again, guaranteed crits are cool, but whatever. So, we're s the same strategy that exists for Hakura and Benny Mario that I've been using for the past week and a half exists today. You're looking for a 4 and 2 orb hand to start out, you swap in Benny, you steal some orbs, and then you get a six card send with Valentine. It's just, it's the way that the game is being played right now. If you're going to use this team at max efficiency, or any team at max efficiency where you have both Benny, Mario, and Hakuro, it's just the best way to do it. Because if you have the protection gauge, you can guarantee it by turn two. And you have a single target DPS, you can guarantee they're all turn two. And that is incredibly powerful. And then turn two, you can either send the alt or you could swap the DPS out, bring Benny Mario back, and then use Hakuro, boost the oranges, and everyone gets an ult. It's it's just such a broken combo that I I do understand why Benny Mario is not single target. Because if he could do that and be single target, I he, it might be the best like two units in the game. Like, no joke. They had to balance him somewhere. But here we go, turn two, we have um, already hit Benny Mario with a 6 combo from Valentine, so now right here we're going to boost the oranges and lower the magic resistance and up our damage with Valentine. And then we're going to have a full hand of boosted oranges plus Valentine. I don't want to use any of the supports right now because I want that for when I can guarantee kill. I just want to really lower his health down as much as possible, because I find the easiest strategy is to get rid of Benny Mario first. One, he's an AoE ult, and that's just annoying, and having to deal with that and then Soe's single target means that your characters will die very quickly if you're not paying attention. So right here, this is like this is what I was talking about. Everybody gets an ult turn three. <laughs> Boosted oranges. Hakuro is not online yet, unfortunate, but I think we'll be okay. So we're going to guarantee our crits, we're going to lower his magic resistance again, and then I did something else in here, I don't remember what. Um, but we'll go ahead and send this uh, three alts here, so the AoE, 4300 damage, it's not a lot. Not a lot. Soe does 14-7, that's, that's okay, and then 18,000. And then we'll see. I, does this finish off anymore? I don't think it does. No, it leaves him with a nut tap of health, which is really unfortunate because that's unnecessary damage that Valentine took right there. But we can at least kill him before he can get his ult off. So we'll go ahead and send these four oranges. It still doesn't get us a Hakuro cage, which is also unfortunate, but at least Benny Mario is out of here. So now we only have to worry about one enemy who does single target ult, and now it's just a matter of beating him down. Soe 
is, in my opinion, the harder enemy. It seems like, well, guaranteed he has much more health. He's got like 30k more health. And it doesn't sound like a gigantic number, but when your alts are only hitting like 18k to begin with before being boosted, it's a lot. And then after boosting, it hits about 30-ish, 40-ish. It's... <laughs> You don't get too many boosted alts here, so you just have to make do. And now it's, it's just an, uh, it's just whittling him down and getting your alts for your two main DPSs and then double boosting them and praying. <laughs> so right here, what are we going to do? We have a forehand of blue, which means that we could orb change here, but it'd be a waste. So I'm just going to go send the blues and start working on alts right now. This gets us almost two full protection meters. And I'm, I swear to god they up the counter rate in this event too. Like, they counter almost every other turn. And it's awful. And also Windmill is type disadvantage, so be warned. If she's not a level 100 and she doesn't have a fucking awakened bracelet, she will die very quickly. You could swap in Guy, um, you know, to go along with uh, Soe's crits. You'll do a little bit extra damage there doesn't really help Valentine though, but it's a possibility. But Windmill is a general banner unit. Uh, I thought about using Veldora for the 60%, but also we're not guaranteed the Pierce, so that extra 10% is kind of wasted on him. So I just went with the strongest all boost here. So now we have a full 6 card send again. We have boosted the oranges again. We'll have max points and a Hawker meter next turn. We'll have three alts here, but I'm not concerned about Benny Morrow's ult, because we already saw how hard it hit, and it was not very hard. At all. So, we're just whittling him down. Soei has a double ult, but <laughs> everyone's a nut tap away from health, essentially, because we have 50% crit resistance down on our two DPSs, and Soei has guaranteed crits. So, wouldn't that be a nice combo to have if Soei had a crit resistance down skill instead of an orb giveaway? whoop de doo so we've brought in Milam, we've boosted the alts, and now we will go ahead and use the Hakuro gauge to give us those 40 points, get a whole hand of orange, and now we will use the attack boost, which is actually very effective because Soei's defense is quite high. So it, it works out to be you know, a seemingly sizable mo amount more than just 40%. But Soei here hits 32k. Valentine hits 31k. We don't have her magic resistance down, and her attack stat is a little bit lower. And 9,000 on that. So we're on turn 8 already. And thankfully, Rimuru took all those like a champ, and we didn't have to die. But here comes the bind on turn 9. So we don't really have enough points to do much except for the crit with Soei. He does have an ult, and he has two cards, which is nice. I thought about sending both of the two as well, but I thought that getting the extra magic damage from Valentine would be a little bit better, but she, he guarded it anyway, and I don't think he would have killed even with those two. So, Soei is now dead. <laughs> Unfortunate, we're now on turn 10, but we have an ult for both Rimuru and Valentine, and he is little to no health. So we just go ahead and send this, and we are out of here. Surprisingly, that ult from Valentine did not kill, which goes to show just how tanky this man is. So there's the 10 turn kill. Um, RNG didn't quite go my way, but there's a team comp for you. If you have a stronger Valentine, if you have a stronger Soe, then obviously you can probably 9 turn it. You just need more DPS. But let's move on to the actual event, which is the nine turn kill. All right, here we go. Time for the main event, halfway through the video, but you know, it is what it is. The nine turn EX2 tempered edge kill. Uh, like I said earlier, we did swap out uh, Soe for trainee because now magic resistance down, magic attack alt, single target. We've, you know, given her a decent amount of attack, so she actually has a higher attack set than both Soe and Valentine at this point. We're still going for that 4-2 hand right here, which we get. So, in comes Benny Mario. Here comes the Orb Steel. Same story. 
all the time. It's pretty much the only team I run right now. One, because we're in the Earth meta, and two, it's just the most efficient team. Out comes Benny, in comes Val. Still targeting Benny Maru first, because he is the easier unit to kill. And of course, like I said earlier, all they do is guard. Every time there's a guard somewhere that prevents me from doing maximum damage. So what do we do here? I believe I save the alt, if I'm not mistaken. I think I swap out Valentine, yeah. Because I think I bring in, yeah, Trainee for Rimuru, because he's got three cards. And then I swap out Valentine for Benny Maru. Yep. And then I use Hakuro. And then I use the orange boost, that way I can get a Trainee ult. Yep, okay, good. At least I remember what I did. It only happened, like, 30 minutes ago, so... <laughs> Alright, thinking hard about what I want to do here. There we go. Again, Milam has type disadvantage, so she's not going to hit overly hard, and she's going to take a lot of damage, so bring her at your own risk. Bop, bop, and the final hit from Trainee does, like, 7,000? 9,700. So, pretty decent damage right there. Yeah, Millum, look at that. Her health bar just melted. <laughs> so, here, I'm going to use the blues that way I can get the Hawkrow gauge for turn 4. That way I could pretty much guarantee the kill on Benny Mario. But I also am afraid that Millum is just going to straight up die. So I'm going to swap her in for Reamer, or swap her out for Reamer, just because he has more health. And I don't feel like bringing in my uh, alt yet for Val. Alright, so there we go. Now we're in a very good position to burn some more cards. <laughs> burn some more cards, because I don't want three attacks with Rimuru. I would like three attacks with like Valentine or Trainee, like that, to take full advantage of having the magic resistance lowered. Because if you play it right, you can kill Benny Maru with a whole hand of trainee cards and then the trainee alt, or the Valentine alt. And then the second alt can immediately go to Soe and just start working on him. So perfect. This is perfect right here. The orbs disappeared just like I wanted it to, so we're going to boost the attack with Rimuru. We're going to boost the magicka damage and lower the magic of resistance on Benny Maru, we'll swap in uh, Milam for the alt boost after using Hakuro. There we go. We don't have the points to boost with the oranges, but we've already taken Benny Maru out anyways. So, so here I'm checking the health. 66.7 is a lot to ask for. And I've attempted it once before and Trainee did not have what it takes to kill. So I'm going to send Valentine first, and then all four of the trainee cards in the hopes that that 200% takes him out, and a cheeky counter, why not? And he's got literally nothing left, so this 200% hit will kill Benny Maru, 11.8, which now ensures that trainee's double boosted alt will start smacking into Soe for 36k, and you saw how little damage that did, you know, comparatively speaking. On the plus side, though, we almost have a double alt with Val or with uh, Trainee again, so that definitely helps. I may have misplayed here, though, because no, actually no, he didn't have any. He doesn't have any defense now, so perfect. There we go. I think. Do I send all? Do I send both of the alts? No, I don't. See, that's the misplay right there. Benny Mario doesn't really do much damage, so I'm not like trying to double boost him in any way, shape, or form. For DPS, so I should have just sent that extra alt and cleared another card out of my hand. It is what it is, though. We make it work. But now, because we've used both Milam and Rimuru's uh, boost, they're now 75 points each, which means if I want to double boost again, I have to get cheeky with playing a round of boosting them with Rimuru and then sending the DPS to the back. That way they can hold on to that attack boost, and then bringing those DPSs back in when I have another 75 points where I can use Wind Millum. Because that's the only way. We, you just you physically cannot do another double boost on the same turn just by using Hakuro, because the point cost is too high. 
So right here, we have three ults again, and he's at about 50% HP. So we're looking okay, but it's only... It is. Turn 8. So we have this turn and next turn to kill him. I was not overly confident, really, because we still need a protection gauge, we still need maximum points, and I still need to hide them and boost, but I've already swapped Rimuru out. Pretty sure. So, you know, I haven't, but he's going to come in now anyways. So I'm going to throw the DPSs in the back regardless, send these four cards with the alt, get Hakuro Gauge, get maximum points, and do you know as much damage as we possibly can. Now we're under 50% HP. And Milam dies. Really unfortunate right there. But again, we didn't really play out the double boost too much. So it's not a terrible loss. But it is a loss. And it is a strategy that I could no longer accomplish. But this is the kill turn right here. We're going to... We're not going to do that because we don't have enough points for that. I would much rather, instead of boosting oranges, because we have, you know, full hand with Hakuro, I would rather lower the magic resistance. So right here, we're going to use the attack boost with Rimuru, use Hakuro, get back up to 65 points, and then we'll use the magic resistance down, and we'll heal, just for funsies. I mean, if we don't kill him here, then we don't do the mission, but whatever. Might as well put everything on the table. So we've got two... Single boosted alts, technically. I mean, technically Val's double boosted, but not with like the alt uh, boost from Windmillum. So right here, we have to pray that these two alts and the six card send does actually kill Soe, which I really wasn't confident in. 25.7 is okay, but not great. 28 point something something is also not great. And here I was holding my breath because knowing my luck, he would guard or something would happen and I would not kill him and he'd have a nut tap of health. But 11.8 thousand on that final hit was just enough to take out his remaining HP because his health bar looked very low. I guarantee you he had like 11.7 left and we did 11.8. But that is the 9 turn kill in Extreme 2 for Tempered Edge. Let me know what you guys think, but for now, take it easy and I'll see you later.